The budget end of the handgun spectrum is getting pretty thick with Wonder 9s, and Gerson has introduced a full-featured gun that clicks up the features quite a bit with the MC9 Disruptor. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David, and this is the Gerson MC9 Disruptor. I'm gonna tell you about this gun, but first I wanna give a shout out to all the dads out there. You guys have the most important job in the world, and I offer you this to help you in your quest. Did you hear about the kidnapping in the park? He's fine, he woke up. So the MC9 Disruptor, I like to disclose this when somebody sends me a gun, I wanna tell you guys about it right at the front of the video. This was sent to me by the EAA, the importer for this gun. So there you go, they didn't give me any money. Um, used all my own ammo, all that good stuff. So the MSRP on the Disruptor right now is $379. Now, if you shop around on the big volume retailers on the internet, you can probably find it for less than 350 bucks. And that's gonna get you a gun that has features that not many guns at that price point have. Well, that's not a ton of money. There are like the PSA Dagger, there's some lower end Canics in that price point, the TSIS guns. There's a bunch of other guns that have kind of entered the field at that sort of price point, but not many of them have threaded barrels, optics cuts, uh, and especially not kind of premium finishes like you see here. So kind of walking you through the gun and sort of what it is, it is a polymer striker fire nine. It's a little bit heavy at about 29 ounces with the magazine in. The grip length on the frame is set up for a 15 round magazine that would be flush, but it comes with a 17 round magazine with a grip sleeve, which kind of completes the grip and gives you sort of that Glock 17 grip size. It's available in two finish colors. This is the green one. There's like a black camo one as well. And it's really just a two color camouflage pattern that's like stenciled onto the gun. If you look closely, you can see where the spray is onto the mag catch and the slide release as well. So it's a green gun that they sprayed light green on. This is really funny because the camouflage pattern on the disruptor will not allow my camera to autofocus on it. So let me show you what I mean. So I've tried to autofocus a couple times now on this and I cannot get it to focus on the camouflage pattern on this, so that's pretty funny. The controls are ambi, as in so much as the slide stop is on both sides of the pistol. The mag catch, I'm assuming, is swappable to the other side. It has an accessory rail. It has a generous trigger guard that you could fit a glove finger in if that's what you're into. Now, it's got a sort of tapered slide. You can see the rear of the slide is a bit thicker than the front of the slide, which is sort of scalloped and relieved. And as a result, it is cut for RMS optics only. You can't fit RMR footprints on there. And by using an optic, you're losing the rear sight. And obviously it comes with the threaded barrel that you see here. So if you're looking at it for muzzle devices or potentially like a suppressor host or something like that, it's got you covered. The trigger on the gun is what I would call kind of a heavyish striker trigger. It is a pretty good defined wall, but it's about a six and a half pull to release and then kind of a you know decent bit of over travel and then a pretty weak reset. I would say overall the trigger is adequate for the kind of the price point that it's at. It's very competitive with the other offerings I've tried at the price point. The frame does come with two replaceable back straps, but it doesn't increase the length of pull that would be from right there to the trigger face. It just kind of you know swells up the back of the gun so it will kind of shift the grip angle if you're looking for more of kind of a Glock thing. The grip as it is right now I would say is a solid medium size. I, you can see how far back my fingers are wear XL size gloves are coming about halfway back on the gun but they're still adequate home for my support hand to build a good grip shooting the gun was pretty pleasant the heavy slide that it has kind of like the um, XD series of pistols I, it was very reminiscent of an XD when I shot it but it reminded me more of like a Beretta APX with how the gun shot just it's a pretty gentle shooting gun specifically for the um, weight that it is. The only issue I ran into as far as reliability was concerned, I tested it with like nine different types of ammo I happened to have with me at the range that day. The range ammo, it loved just fine. I tried the SNB 115s, Igman 124s, uh, Federal Syntec 130 PCC loads, Winchester Super X 124 grains. It ran those no problem. I tried five different types of hollow points with it. This bad boy, these are Nosler ASP 115. This is Nosler 124 ASP. This is Critical Duty 135 plus P. This is Hornady 147 Subsonics. This is Critical Defense Light 115s. Mmm, 
there's not enough uh, gas in this one to run the slide, looks like. The only ammo that it didn't like and basically turned it into a bolt action gun was the Hornady Critical Defense 115 Light, the low recoiling stuff that's really intended for the uh, you know short barreled guns. This gun is so heavily sprung and the slide is so heavy that it basically would just catch the brass every time. It didn't probably run the slide quite all the way to the rear, and there wasn't enough time for the brass to kick out, so it would just kind of catch it. All in all, from shooting it, the biggest single annoyance that I had is that it comes with one magazine. So you're shooting, you got to go back, reload the magazine, come back out, do some more shooting. It'd be really great to have more magazines, but at the same time, that increases the price point. And I mean, if you buy the dagger, it comes with one magazine too, unless you buy the more expensive bundles. So it's kind of par for the course at the price point. There are some things I don't like about the pistol, and this is due to the fact that I am a neck beard competition pistol shooting nerd. So I look for kind of these performance features and this gun doesn't really have them in the way that I like mine to have. But most of you are gonna hear me say these things and be like, you're a nerd, dude, give it up. And that's all fair, but I wanna tell you about them anyway. The biggest complaint I have, and this is true on the lower priced Canix like the Mete, is the fact the slide is scalloped and the serrations are very, very shallow. So trying to manipulate from the front of the slide is very difficult and whatever finish they're using seems to make the serrations just a little bit more slippery. So the heavy recoil spring does kind of make it very difficult to manipulate from the front of the gun. Number two is the slide design makes it have an RMS footprint optic, which RMS optics are great. I like the shield optics. You know, there are great optics at the footprint like the Hollow Sun EPS and all those good things. The problem with that is if you get the good ones with the kind of the bigger windows that you see on that footprint, you're spending more than this gun, you know, is worth. You're spending, you know, 400 bucks for an EPS or you're spending more than that for like the Shield RMSX or something with a bigger window. So it's a full size gun that has small window optics typically because I imagine most people who are looking at this gun don't want to spend $400 on an optic to put on it. The other issue that I could see is if somebody was buying this for a suppressor host because the rear sight is milled into the optic plate cover, you can't swap it out for like suppressor height sights. I checked the EAA website, there's only one set of MC9 sights on there and it's not for the optic ready model, it's for the standard you know, irons only model. And finally, the traction on the grip is just not uh, that aggressive. It's just very mild is what I'd call it. If we were using like a salsa scale to kind of rate the texture, I would rate the texture a mild texture. I generally prefer something that's more of a medium to a hot. If you see kind of this pattern, I think the spray on it actually kind of dumbs down the pattern a little bit because if you feel it on the dark green areas, it's a little more aggressive. And then in the light green areas, it just kind of isn't quite as aggressive. But that's a pretty mild criticism. And I have that criticism, honestly, on most polymer guns. Very few people, in my opinion, get the grips right on these guns. Talking about the aftermarket for the MC9, there really isn't one. Uh, trying to find the magazines online, you can buy them, you know, directly from EAA or some of, you know, like Gun Mag Warehouse has them, and they're like 35 to 40 bucks. So, you know, it's a budget gun with kind of an expensive magazine. You know, the Gearson guns are not the only ones that do this. Ruger magazines are pretty pricey for what they are too, and they kind of compete in the same segment as well. So, kind of kind of par for the course there. And the other side is if you want a holster specifically for this gun, you're gonna have to use a light and get one of those universal fit light holsters because I couldn't find anybody who was making uh, holsters specifically for this model. That's not to say that they don't exist, but I kind of lost interest in my search after about five minutes of clicking through websites and being disappointed. Just like you, no doubt, are disappointed with this review so far. What are you talking about? This is the best review you've watched all day. At least I'd like to think so. So this is definitely a gun at a price point if you're looking for something other than sort of the traditional three to $400 pistols that you know can be on your radar. If you're looking at other guns kind of in that price segment, I've got a video on the Beretta APX A1 you can watch here.